<laughs> Yay. Okay. I was a little worried there for a second that we weren't going to have sound. <laughs> Yay. Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are back for another live session. I'm really excited. Um, we These have been so much fun. So much fun. Okay. So there's a little chat happening here. This is awesome. Everyone's saying happy Monday. So happy Monday to you. I have a fun thing for us to try today and I've never done it before. So we'll see how that works out. We know that sometimes um, things don't turn out well, but hopefully today will. Dion says, hi, Alice. Welcome. So uh, my name is Alice Bull and I run the Scrap Happy membership group for scrapbookers over at scraphappy.org. And if you are new here, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And I hope that this will be something fun to get you inspired, to get you using your scrapbook stuff, and just to make you a little happier at home. That is the goal and that's what we're gonna do. So we have covered a lot of different topics lately. It has been so much fun. Everyone's saying hi, hi Julie. Um, so lots of fun things. On Friday, we were talking about, um, oh my gosh, I was just gonna say Nouveau Drops and I'm like, no, we talked about Nouveau Drops lots last week though. But on Friday, we talked about the Fuse tool. We talked about actually using that Fuse tool, how many people had it in packaging and haven't even taken it out of the packaging. There's been a few. Um, apparently, I put stuff on top of something that clicks. So I shouldn't do that. <laughs> so let's not do that. Um, so Fuse Tool. We also talked about magical flip flaps and you can make your own versions um, using uh, stuff from, from the Fuse, from We Are Memory Keepers, from the Fuse line of stuff. Or you can get the little attachment things called flip flaps from Close to My Heart, which I am a big fan of because I have used a ton of them in my books and they're a super fun way to add interaction to pages. Uh, we also kind of talked about some of my best tips and tricks for actually making pocket pages. So we got to a lot on Friday. <laughs> like, <laughs> we got to a lot. And we have just covered so many fun things. We've had chats about um, making, like making your page have a certain mood, have a certain feel to it. So we've, I've showed like, how many layouts have I showed this month? Like a hundred at least, like probably, right? Like showed all kinds of different stuff. Hopefully something along the way has inspired you and said, oh, I wanna do that. Sometime this week, we are going to be talking about stencils and I'll be playing with some stencils on the camera. Hopefully that all works out well. Uh, but today is not stencil day. Today is something else that is fun. And we are going to be talking about... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Nadine says, hi, Alice. Hi. We are going to be doing the Vicky Booten bubble technique. Has anybody seen this? Has anybody tried this? I want to know. So please type right now and tell me, have you seen it? Have you tried it? And if you're like, no, no, what is this? Then oh, I can't wait to show you. <laughs> I can't wait to show you because this is so fun. And hopefully mine works out because then it would be a good indication that this is really as easy as she says it is. <laughs> So the Vicky Booten bubble technique. I'd love to know if you've tried it. Leave me a comment. And if you're like not heard about this, oh my gosh, I can't wait. But I'm gonna do it live on camera. <laughs> Nadine says, Shh, she's technically still working from home. We're not gonna tell on you, I promise. <laughs> Dion says, yay for the Vicky Booten bubble technique. <laughs> and Carrie says, I saw it, but I haven't tried it. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. Um, I should have probably gone back and looked at a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure that I know what she was doing. I guess we'll find out. And Jacqueline says, I saw her do it, but I haven't tried it. And <laughs> it's good. Sheila's keeping the secret, Nadine. It's all good. We're not telling. And Nadine hadn't seen it, hadn't heard of it. Joyce says, bubble what? <laughs> So perfect. Yay, this is fun. Okay, so here is what 
it goes down like if you don't know, one of my favorite scrapbook designers is Vicki Bootin. She has lines of papers, but she also has lines of other scrapbooking thing for scrapbookers to venture into the world of mixed media. And that's a really fun thing because I think that mixed media is super fun to use with our scrapbooks, but sometimes it's a little scary and it's a little intimidating. And we don't want none of that. We want to have fun with our mixed media stuff and be able to embrace it. And so Vicky has all of these different products that allow us to have fun and play. I don't have them all. I don't have all of her stuff. I have a little bit. And so today we're going to be playing with some of her uh, paints. So I have some of her paints. These are acrylic based kind of paints. This is a set that I had picked up. Like, look at the colors. Aren't they yummy and delicious? Like, so good. This um, Aqua E1, this like a really pale one here is called Daiquiri Ice. Mm -hmm. And then this one here is called Saltwater Taffy. And they're like good enough to eat, right? <laughs> uh, Julie says, I must be living under her rock because I have no idea what this is. <laughs> And this greenish one is called Watermelon Burst. And then this purple one is called Plum Pudding. So I am really fond of naming things after food. In fact, I have had a dog named Toffee, a dog named Coco, and a dog named Cookie. <laughs> so I'm all for naming things after delicious food things. Uh, yeah, they're beautiful jewel tones, says Kathy. So these are super fun colors and I've played with them a little bit. There's even ink on the t or some paint on the top to prove it. But I haven't played with them a lot and I think today will be a super fun way to see how this goes. <laughs> so basically this takes us back to our childhood. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what kind of paint? Vicky Bootin. It's available through American Crafts. You can probably get it through scrapbook.com. And if you happen to accidentally use my link, that's my link there. And I appreciate you if you do decide to use it. Bit.ly slash scrappy shop. It'll take you to scrapbook.com. And if you shop there, I get a little kickback from their affiliate sales. So I appreciate that. Um, I really love the stuff. I got it from my local scrapbook store, so there's always that too, which is even better. And um, I love that she's trying to make this accessible for people. But enough chat. Let's play. Let's see how this works. And what I've done is I have actually uh, cut up some pieces. You guys have seen these before. This is my Creative Scrapbooker super stock paper. So it's really thick. You know, I've done like the whole listen to how awesome it is. So I have a big piece here available. And then I have these little pieces that are cut to the size card fronts that I use. And I thought we will practice on the card fronts and then create a big one if things are going well. <laughs> Sound good? <laughs> Okay, so let's put up a, let's get rid of this, and let's put up a split screen so that we can kind of see what's happening. And it looks okay. Okay, because I did try to set the color tone so that it wasn't like way too yellow or pinkish, orangey, the craziness that it tries to do with my desktop here. Okay, so let's have a look slide this around and I, yeah, thanks so much for being here. This is super fun. Okay. So here is my cup. So I have just a regular, um, red solo cup. <laughs> we'll fill you up. But let's have a party. <laughs> right? Um, so I've got my solo cup. I did bring a glass cause I thought maybe I would just do it right in the glass. And I'm like, eh, probably be way easier to clean up if I don't put it in a glass. But then I was like worried that maybe I would tip this thing over because like it doesn't look very sturdy um but I like the wide mouth and I think that is beneficial for what we're doing today so I think what I'll do is I'll put this I'll get this started mix it up in here and put it in here so that I can do the bubble technique and this is super fun because 
it's like all the things that your mom tells you not to do when you're a kid is like making messes and blowing bubbles like in your milk or something okay so this is literally where we go so uh, first of all into here we are going to put some water we're going to put some soap like dish soap and then we're going to put some of our color and i thought this would be super fun if we um so i, I brought out this soap and then i'm like it's kind of orange and i don't know if the color is gonna mix well with this i don't know if it's gonna affect anything so then i went and i found some other soap so i found some blue soap this is like dawn ultra it's just soap it's like dish soap so we're gonna put some of that in here and i'm gonna just take this down for a second so i can kind of see what i'm doing and i really don't know how much i need so hopefully it'll be enough i guess we'll see if it doesn't mix up good enough then we'll know and i need to put some in here so what i thought is maybe i would start by using this daiquiri ice color and then I could always add darker colors into it to kind of mix the colors. And I thought that might be a little fun. Only put a little soap. You can always add more if you need, says Dion. Oh, so I might have already messed this up. So tell you what I'll do is I will dump some of my soap into this glass just in case I've got too much. Okay, so there we go. I'll just dump some of that in there because that won't matter. It doesn't actually reach the bottom. <laughs> okay, so there we go. First tip, bring them on, because like I said, I've never done this. Um, I'm gonna take some of my, mm, can, can I open this? That would be terrible if I can't even open it. Yes, go light to dark. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna squeeze in some of this paint and um, gonna add some water because we need to add some water so uh, acrylics yeah they're acrylic uh, paint from the Vicky Booten line and then I brought out a little spoon so I can stir it up and those the, the paints should stir into the water now one thing I noticed is that this paint doesn't have any shine and I watched one of her videos where she had shiny paint so it left like this little bit of shiny glitter to it. So I'm actually going to pull out, um, this is like an old product that they used to have with Close to My Heart. I'm pretty sure they don't have this unless they brought it back. So Dion says mix it thoroughly. I'm going to put a dash of this in here. This is called Create a Shade Paint and it kind of has like a pearlescent thing. I'm just putting like a little blob of that in there because you could actually use that paint to make your own spray stuff and uh, you could use it was like um, glimmer mist kind of thing you could make your own kind of tinted glimmer mist you could tint your own paints using the reinkers it was pretty fun stuff okay so here we go mix it thoroughly I don't see any chunks or anything in here it looks like it's pretty good I don't know if I need a little more water So that looks pretty good, I think. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. If we need more, we'll do more. Um, so here we go. I did bring my paper towel handy because I thought, well, this has the potential to get pretty messy. <laughs> yeah, so Vicki Booten, she does Facebook Lives. She's also on YouTube and she does teach these things and she's been doing a few more Facebook Lives lately. So that's been a really fun thing. So if you want to go and follow her, it's V-I-C-K-I, Vicky, and then um, Booten, B-O-U-T-I-N. And she's actually a Canadian gal, so way to go, Vicky. <laughs> I've actually taken classes with her before she hooked up with American Crafts and had her own line of stuff. So yeah, she's super fun. And she has fun techniques and her classes are high energy. So if you get a chance to go check out her stuff, like she'll, she'll get you right in there. Okay, and now I'm gonna do what your mom always says don't do. I'm gonna blow bubbles in this. So you want your bubbles to come right to the top so that they're spilling out. Hopefully they have some color in them and I'm going to dab this on top. I don't like literally don't see any 
color showing up on here. Do you see any color? I see no color. So maybe I don't have enough of the paint in this. Yeah, I'm not seeing any color on there yet. Bubbles up over the edge and hoping for big ones. So overall, this is going well, other than the fact that maybe this paint is just not dark enough, bright enough, colorful enough. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't get enough in there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dion. Um, typed her name like into the chat there so that anybody that's unfamiliar can go and follow her. And like I said, I will test this for you and then we'll have all the helpful tips that people that are not Vicky might need <laughs> to make this work. Okay, maybe I should store these upside down, hey? That might uh, make the rest of this work a little bit better. So I do see like the, the water part looks very colorful right now. And I'm just going to take that out. Okay, let's store that upside down on my desk. I did pick a very faint color for the first go around here. And uh, I think it's fun. Mix it up good. Yeah, so the one of the things that I love to try is using different things in different ways. And I think that this is definitely a different way than I would have thought of. And because uh, like I've seen the things where you put the paint and you blow it across your paper with a straw and I've seen different things like that. But this, this was new. It's not carrying a lot of color with it, but you can definitely see that it is leaving some of the bubble effect on the paper. Hard to see because it's so light. Blend in a little of the darker shade if I'm not getting enough color. So let's do that and take the froth off with a spoon if you have one. Ooh, I do have a spoon. So none of the froth. Just bubbles. <laughs> this is perfect. I love having people that have tried this <laughs> or watched more of the stuff <laughs> so that they know. I blew alcohol inks with a straw once at the library, says Sheila. See, looking, getting crafty and creative. That's, that's fun. This is like super pretty. If this was a nice drink, like not full of soap, it would look very appetizing. Like a, a frosty slushy drink that I would enjoy in the summertime. <laughs> okay, so let's remove the frothy stuff. Because we want big, pretty bubbles to get the best effect, I guess. Okay. We'll throw this back in here. Oh, they're blowing up good. <laughs> I am not getting enough color out of these things. Give that a second there. Now I have seen, oh, they're getting, okay. We're getting some color guys. Here we go. Have a look at that. We're getting some color finally. You can see the color. Oh, <laughs> that was like a frothy little colory bit that wasn't mixed up. Okay, go back in here and make the 
bubbles. Got lots of the frothy ones on the side here. There. Um, take the, I blew, uh, yeah, they're using liquid inks. So I have seen. Yay, we can see it, says John. Yes, there is a little bit of color happening there. So I'm going to see if I can do a couple more cards with this. If I can get rid of the frothy stuff on the sides, maybe. So that we can get prettier bubbles. Now that we've got it actually making some some difference right like it's actually doing something i think uh i can start with another card and it will look extra pretty by starting a new one yay yeah <laughs> yeah so watching somebody blow bubbles in their milk today or in their stuff and this one looks Oh, this is so light again. I thought we were there. I thought we had this thing solved. Pretty pale. It's pretty pale. I would say it's like not enough bang for my buck yet. So I don't know if we try putting more color in there. We can see it, but it's pretty light. Yeah. So far, I wouldn't say we're winning, guys. So, yeah, someone said they've seen them using liquid inks. I have saw, um, yeah, variations of this. Okay. If this doesn't work, I don't know what will. <laughs> And of course, like with any good art project, it's getting all over my hands. So I think I'm all, <laughs> I'm winning in that department. <laughs> okay, so um, Vicki Booten actually has a new collection out right now and it's called Let's Wander. That was the collection that she released at Creativation this spring. So I'll, I'll link that below in the comment section um it's a travel collection and i know we're not all doing a lot of travel right now but um when you maybe maybe you have a little more time to actually look back at previous trips that you've done and i definitely am looking back at previous trips i've done because it's like oh my gosh i just want to be doing more of that yeah these bubbles are starting to carry uh, more color, so I think this is gonna work better now. So I'm gonna just remove some of this froth as recommended and Blow some some bigger bubbles with it Okay, I'm making a good old mess here on my table. Hopefully Okay, look at that. Oh, I'm getting it, guys. I'm getting it. So the pale color was almost too pale, I think. And this darker color is totally working. Yeah, April says this This is a good time to do some of the travel scrapbooking that I've not done. And I agree. <laughs> yeah, and Dion says, yeah, you add more and darker colors as you go so that you can build layers on the piece. So now that this is actually working, I think I should start layering some onto my big paper. What do you think? See if we can make that happen. So I'm gonna just set this, those little papers aside and I'm gonna actually start doing some of this and applying it in patches to this little paper. So we got there. Now we know a little bit darker, be a little more aggressive in the beginning because that, that first color really was like, really not showing up. <laughs> but you can see the, the, the bubbles are actually more bubbly, um, more colorful, <laughs> more bubbly. My bubbles are more bubbly. <laughs> like... Uh-huh, uh-huh, this is working. Oh my gosh, this is cool. I'm so glad we did this. Because <laughs> when I saw her do it, I'm like, that looks awesome. I want to do that. And then, you know, yeah. 
and you think, oh, how's that going to be? But I'm like, this is perfect because everybody wonders how that's going to be, right? Everybody's like, mm, is that going to work? What are the tips? What makes it actually viable and doable? And uh, we can explore that together. That's what we're doing. Try spooning a pile of bubbles onto the paper. I saw Allie Edwards do that at an event once, and then she set it aside to try. Okay, well, let's do that. I uh, will do that. Do we need like the big bubbles or like the foamy bubbles? Like, you'll have to let me know because I have both. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to take the big bubbles, just assuming that you meant that for now, and I will scoop them. <laughs> I don't know if I can scoop them, actually. I don't know that they want to do that. I can definitely do the foamy ones. So the, like, the foamy stuff by the edge, the foamy stuff scoops on, <laughs> kind of. Uh... The, the paper that your spoon is on looks cool. Yeah, I know. So we're getting uh, all kinds of interesting concoctions happening here. Okay, so I'll just set that there. That's good. Uh, but I'll keep going on this big paper. And once I get this big paper kind of covered with this, then I'll do another color. The big bubbles. I, I couldn't get them to scoop. <laughs> but I'll show you this one that I just did with the foamy bits. And I think we found a good solution. Um, I'm going to have to pull that straw out of here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to hold this up to the front camera for a second. Can you see all the bubbles? Oh my gosh. It looks really good. Okay. What about this? Maybe that's better. Oh, see, it's looking pretty good. And there's some areas that are a little darker and some areas that are a little lighter. And I think now I can go in with more colors. So this is fun. I'm going to do um, a couple more on this card here because it really didn't get a lot of color on it. And then we'll move on to another color. Oh my gosh, that looks really good now. And that's just like a kind of like a start to it. I think I should do one more uh, card base so that I have one more card at least. April says now do a pink or red one. I think if I added um, pink or red, I don't actually have a pink or red um, paint here, but I do have the purple. Okay, so this, guys, I'm sold. I, I, I was a little worried there. I'm like, this is going down the tube really fast. <laughs> but I am sold. Like, these are beautiful. And that little bit of gloss that I put in there just adds like a tiniest, like the tiniest little bit of shine to them. Oh my goodness. This is pretty. Um, you know, I might do like another, I've got a few card bases here. Um, maybe I'll, I'll save one. No, I'll do a little bit on one more. Can you tell I'm like quite enjoying this? <laughs> My mom, I wonder what she would say. I, I'll have to send her this video because, uh, yeah, I thought you were going to do it. I knew I don't. No, I'm going to mix the colors like right in this one and uh, see how that goes. But I'm going to send her this video and be like, look, mom, look what I did on TV <laughs> today on my live stream today. I, I blew bubbles just like you hated when I was a kid. <laughs> And she'll have a good laugh at that because she knows me. Okay, so I'm going to mix some of this green into this one now. You figured it out. Yeah, yeah, this is working. This is working. Okay, I'm going to take this out so I can stir it. Oh, 
dump some of that green in there and mix it up. And anybody that would be worried that this is using like, this is grossing you out, says Sheila. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know. <laughs> there is not a way to blow bubbles that is like graceful and not like, you know, kind of dis disgusting. I, I, I give it to you. I give it to you. Okay, like the color has gone like really um, rich now. Mm, I'm excited to see this. Okay. And I'm gonna add more to like to that one that I was doing with the where I set them on it. Okay. And I'll take some of the foam out here. Yeah. Sorry. I know. Um, I, I get it. If this is too much, like if Mickey is here today, I'm sorry, Mickey. I apologize ahead of time. She's got misophonia. So noises like drive her like crazy. So <laughs> like, I can just imagine what this would do. <laughs> like... Ooh. get a couple little areas with some different colored bubbles. It's kind of just like letting the bubbles keep their shape as much as they can until they kind of pop on their own, which creates the coolest bubble effect. So basically, as you touch them here, you want them to leave those big bubble marks and then kind of pop to create the best look. That's what I'm seeing. <laughs> she says I have a problem with bubbles. I'm trying to create to watch out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm like warning. I should have like a warning at the beginning of this. Warning, this gets gross. <laughs> And uh, there we go. And this one I think has barely any color on it. guys this is so pretty I'm really loving this okay time to add the purple <laughs> I was so worried about that Kathy said my luck I would drink it by accident <laughs> super worried about that especially putting a straw in front of my mouth <laughs> I'm like, don't drink anything. I brought my coffee. I have my coffee here, but I'm like, don't drink anything. <laughs> April says, I've been shaking so many cocktails lately. I might forget and drink it too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's like cocktail time. I think I may have added too many bubbles almost to this card. We'll see what that looks like when they all pop and, and do their thing. Cause like maybe it'll be awesome. Okay, let's break up some of those bubbles. And I'm gonna add some purple in here and see if we can't uh, really muck with the color with this one. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I was saying like anybody that's thinking, wow, you're using up like an awful lot of your paint. I'm just happy to use it. Like seriously, that's the point where I'm at right now. It's like, if I actually use my stuff, I'm like, woo. <laughs> I don't know if I got enough of the purple in there. Uh, it doesn't seem to be worth the effort to me, says Jenny. It's very much an adventure. This is an adventure. Maybe not the kind of thing I would do all the time, but definitely an adventure. Adventure in creativity. And, to, you know, to play for, for a day is kind of fun. You know, I bet you if you have kids at home, anybody that has kids, they would probably really be excited about this one. <laughs> If you're brave enough to do it with them. 
Okay, this did not make it turn very purple, which I really thought it would. It looks just more tealy. <laughs> Darker teal. Mm. I don't know that we achieved a wonderful thing. Yeah, this is a great use of the paint. Is just what I was thinking, says <laughs> Yeah, I think um, I think I buy way more paint than I actually plan on ever using. So this is just a good way for me to uh, at least use some of it. Oh, I didn't use any of that darker one on my big sheet. Guys, you need to remind me. I'm totally forgetful. <laughs> Be like, Alice, didn't you want to put some of that on there as you layer all the colors on? Oh, well, that's okay. Oh, look at that. Let's put a little on here. Yeah, it just looks like more shades of the blue, actually. I wouldn't say I've got like major color differences happening in the same thing. I guess I would need to like maybe create different cups. Uh, it's an I wonder kind of victim. <laughs> I had one, I had a lot of fun exploring wonder in my life. That's a good way of looking at it. Okay, I'm gonna create a brand new card just with this darker color and see if I can't make like almost like the perfect version of this. We'll see. Yeah, I might have got too many in the middle of that there. Oh, like. Oh, I don't know. It's pretty cool, actually. Look at that. Even the areas where it got like too much bubble, too much foamy part on them, they look they look okay. I'm quite happy with how this has all turned out, actually. And kind of relieved that I didn't have to just come on here and be like, well, I botched up this whole thing. <laughs> so that did look like it might happen for a little bit. Okay, that looks good. And I'm gonna dip some of this in here. Pull that out for a sec. Yeah, that one looked really good. This takes a bit longer with the giant paper. Oh, but it's like turning out so cool. I'm excited. This is good. This is good. <laughs> yeah, I, I could have made purple if I had some red here, but we, uh, we're working with what's in this palette. Because I used to have like a ton of those memory makers paints anybody go back that far <laughs> nailed it not a pinterest fail <laughs> that's right <laughs> like took me a bit to get there so i think the good thing is that i was quite determined to make this work and thankfully i had seen it work Um, what area? Let's go here in this area and this area. And I definitely need to get that corner, but it's almost there. Can you give us a tour of your dishwasher? I'll be happy spending the time talking with people, not my husband. <laughs> I, okay, I did something crazy over the weekend, guys. I got chickens. <laughs> I got chickens. Yes, I got chickens, guys. So um, I'm now a chicken farmer. And I have chickens. And um, we're actually incubating some eggs also. Uh, 
I think this is the prettiest thing ever. And there's a couple little areas. Ooh, there's like a little bit of overspray happening here. <laughs> I'm just noticing now. It's not like bad or anything, but it's getting on a couple of these cards. Okay, I've almost got this paper to like where it looks pretty darn good. So there's a couple of little blank spots where I want to have just a little something. Oh my gosh, look at this paper. <gasps> if I had other colors, it would look good. It would look good too. Okay. So, okay, back to the mem making memories paints. Um, oh, and my steak dinner from our, from our, oh, it was so good. So good. Yeah, we, we had some really good steaks. They were a roast that we bought from Costco and my husband topped it up. Oh my gosh, it was so good. So Marcia said, I just threw out a whole bunch of making memories paints. They were all dried up because I haven't used them in years. Same thing here, same thing, like seriously. That's why I actually felt like bad about buying these when I got these ones from Vicki Booten because I'm like, but I have those paints. And then I went and I looked at those paints and they were like solid like rocks. So then I didn't feel bad anymore. <laughs> you could do it in a mixing bowl and get a larger bubble area to cover a bigger area. <gasps> See, we're taking this to the next level. Now we're taking this to the next level. Okay, so I'm gonna set that there. And, oh, I'm gonna take a little bit more of the foam and put it on this one. This is like my like foam dispensary. <laughs> like the, the little card that, that ended up with all the foam. And I think it'll be cool in the end. I think it will. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it like that, I think. So that one's just gonna sit and dry, I think. Did I get all enough areas on it? I think so. And you can see a little bit of the color differences in that one, so that's kinda neat. And this, oh, this is a hot mess. <laughs> like, I don't know if you can see that all over my counter. But I think I can do something with some of this, right? Like, there's gotta be something I can do with it with that leftover stuff. I don't know, I'll have to see. Maybe I'll just clean it all up and I'll be like, whew, need to clean it up. So yeah, um, I love mixed media backgrounds. So here is, let's line these up so you can see them, the different effects that we got with the bubble thing. I did six of these card bases because that was like one sheet of the paper and different colors kind of happening. This is the foamy one. And these ones are all bubble effects. Like look how good they turned out, right? And then on top of that, we got the paper, my 12 by 12 paper. Like this is gonna be so pretty. <laughs> so excited. Okay, and now y'all know, know how I laugh like a goofball sometimes. Okay, so let's tell you about my check-ins. I have to tell you about these. Um, Let's see here. I have to send some pictures to my computer because it doesn't actually do the stuff like it's supposed to. And I'll show you my awesome chickens. And here we go. Send those to my laptop and I'll put them up here and then we can look at them and I'll tell you about what led to me getting ridiculous chickens. <laughs> so there we go. And I think that that's a super fun thing. Now, I don't want that to tip over at all, but I do have to bring this a little bit closer so I can touch this. And let's put me up here. How many chickens did you get? I got six hens and one rooster. And if you're like, okay, that's it for the chickens. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to my emails so that you get my cool, awesome updates. That's the thing that's going on. Um, so yeah, the chickens, we got six hens and a rooster. So we've got seven of them right now. And I, um, I was really excited because 
the chickens are um, different kinds. There's different kinds of chickens and they are, um, let's see here. I, I can bring this into my, oh, here, add a picture. Oh, I, I know what I gotta do. I gotta open it up. and add a picture. Oh, did I get the number of it? Not very good at this sometimes. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, here we go. Add this. There we go. These are my chickens and let's put them right here. So these are my chickens. Uh, we had a coop and we got the chickens from my mother-in-law. So she had like quite a few chickens and she was okay with uh, giving us, giving up a few of them. And she said, yeah, totally. You can have some of the chickens. Actually, my brother-in-law had the rooster. That's the white one here. Um, and then the rest of them are different kinds. So there's like some buff Orpingtons. There's a, the stripy one up on the top perch there is a Plymouth Rock. And then there's some other ones that are probably Ericanas, but they might be a like mixture of stuff. And then she, because she also had like the other grown up chickens, she was able to, um, like give us the chance. Can you hug them? I can pet them. I wouldn't say I can hug them yet. They're not that friendly, but yeah, there's a variety. <laughs> They're like a mishmash of chickens. It's like a hodgepodge chicken house right now. And my chicken house isn't very big, so we're going to uh, uh, expand the outdoor run area, but it's kind of fun. And um, I needed more reasons to get outside and to do stuff. And I think that this was a good opportunity for me to have some outdoor um, excitement for my chickens and, you know, listening to chickens, you guys, like just even hearing them, like is kind of hilarious, <laughs> you know, kind of hilarious, right? The whole chicken thing going on. So yeah, <laughs> I was thinking black, brown, yellow, and white. I know like it's a good hodgepodge mixture of chickens. Um, but yeah, I was kind of, We've had chickens before with my kids and they enjoyed them. We enjoyed hatching them. So we did um, get a bunch to, um, of eggs. So we popped those into the incubator. And let me just show you here. This is, I'll just put it up on the screen. That's me with the eggs getting all ready to throw them in the incubator, which we did. And now I have, uh, we called it Alice's Magical Chickomatic Machine. <laughs> so hopefully they work. Everything's looking good so far. 21 days, I should have some baby chicks and that'll be super fun. <laughs> and then uh, by then we'll have the outdoor run ready and stuff too. Well, they'll, they won't be able to go outdoors quite yet, but yeah. And those ones, I plan to have like at least one or two that are kind of like my little pets <laughs> up there. So we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, but we had a lot of the supplies that we needed and then we were able to get the rest for, for like for now from my mother-in-law and then we'll we'll grab some of the other feed and stuff that we need. So yeah, that's my adventure in chickens. It's just something that will make me happy at home, which is like the whole goal right now. Plus it gets me outdoors. It gives me something else to be responsible for so that I have to get up and do something every day and go outside. And I think that, plus these are already egg layers. That's why we got a mixture of the eggs to incubate and hatch. And we got some actual like large full-size chickens so that we can get some eggs. They're not laying eggs yet, but maybe tomorrow, the next day, once they kind of feel settled in their home here, then we should have eggs from them again. And yeah, kind of cool. So that's my adventure in chickens <laughs> and eggs and today in bubbles. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're taking on some kind of crazy side project right now, I'd love to know about it. I have another one that I'll tell you about when the supplies come in the mail. I'm hoping that they'll be here any day and I'll be like, 
I can't believe I'm doing this, but here we go. So I can't wait to tell you more about the fun things that I'm doing to be happier at home and yeah, getting a little playful in the crafty stuff. Like blowing bubbles isn't necessarily the thing I'm going to do for scrapbook pages every day, but once in a while, woo, so fun. April says that the neighborhood behind me is zoned for it, but we are not. Every once in a while, I can hear the crowing. Yes, that must mean they have some roosters in there too. Because <laughs> the chickens themselves, like they kind of cluck and stuff. But they're, yeah, you don't get the stuff. Sheila says, I want chickens. I live in a rural area, but because we live inside the town limits, we can't. Yeah, and it's, it's funny because so many towns nowadays are getting more progressive about the idea of chickens. There are issues with having chickens. Like, Chickens are stinky and they poo a lot. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. But they also, um, you know, they're a good source of entertainment. They're actually pretty smart. They're quite entertaining to have. And they can really be cool. Like you can teach your chickens to like follow you. Um, in the past, we actually did free range chickens where they like went out in our yard and they would hang out in the yard all day. And then we would call them back to the coop at night and they almost always put themselves away at night. Um, I'm not sure whether we will free range these ones or not. I think we'll do a pen. Just, we've got a lot of, um, uh, animals in the area <laughs> that are find chickens a tasty meal. So I don't know. Yeah, April says our homeowner association that says no. Yeah, and Sheila says we're thinking about moving counties further out to nowhere and we'll be able to there. So yeah, it's a good thing to know when you um, buy your land or look for your new home. Um, the home we had previous to this is just down the road from here, but they had special covenants on their land where you were not allowed to have livestock. I think chickens you're probably kind of done with, like wasn't a big deal, but you couldn't have livestock, but you could have up to four horses. My husband was so upset that you were, he wasn't allowed to have like a calf or a sheep or goats and stuff. He was like, what do you mean I can't have that, but I can have horses. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we um, when we moved here, it didn't have all those rules. We could do whatever we liked. <laughs> uh, April says, in my neighborhood, there are a lot of cats and raccoons. Yeah, uh, snakes can be an issue. Not here because we don't have those. Like we've got garter snakes. It's not really a big deal. Um, fox, fox got in the hen house. We've also had weasels and <laughs> different things like that. So you got to be, you know, you know, keep them safe. So we got to work on our outdoor pen, but we still have snow in our yard. Like it's ridiculous. There's still snow. Anyways, back to scrappy stuff for a second. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is super fun. Is he getting a goat now? I don't really want a goat, but he keeps talking about a sheep, but I'm a little bit worried. Like if we get a lamb or something, we raise a couple of lambs. I don't know if I'm going to want to really eat them. Like they'll just be too much like a pet. <laughs> Like, I don't know. There's like this whole line between that and, you know, I don't know. We'll see. When I was a child, we had a cow named Beef. And because he was going to be the beef in our freezer, it's farm life, right? <laughs> and um, when he was like a great big steer, we actually, I'd gone out. We used to, he was like a big pet, right? Because we'd raised him from the time he was little. And we had... um I was scratching him on the forehead. He jerked his head up and kind of got startled at something. I got startled, so I pulled my hand back. But because I was little, I was reaching through the barbed wire fence. So I have this big scar. I don't know if you can see it on my hand. It goes all the way from here down to here. And actually, it used to jump a little bit and pop down here. So it goes all the way down my hand. And that was from the barbed wire fence. And it was super funny. I don't know if I've scrapbooked this yet. P somebody please be like, Alice. You gotta do the scar story. <laughs> My cousin was with me. She saw the blood and freaked out. She was just like, ah, and I'm like, I found some old Kleenex from my coat pocket, you know, your winter coat or something. Find some old Kleenex. I popped it on there. I'm like, it's gonna be okay, Rhonda. Let's just go tell my mom. <laughs> and so we ran up to the house and it was, you know, I kind of look at that. And then later on in life, she actually became a paramedic or something uh emt she was an emt not a paramedic she was an emt i'm like 
from the girl that cried when she saw somebody else's blood to becoming an EMG. That was like a big jump. <laughs> so, super funny. Uh, Kathy said, our friends had pigs, pork chop, and bacon. You know their fate. <laughs> yeah. And Sheila said, my husband's cow with socks. My father-in-law used to pet his burgers and call it by name. <laughs> I know it's part of life on a farm and you kind of get to do, do know that life. When we had chickens, we encouraged our kids to get involved in all parts of it. And that included the butchering and they helped to do the butchering and the plucking and cleaning them up afterwards. And I think it's, um, you know, if you're going to raise these animals for meat and you're going to be doing these things, then it's kind of part of it. You kind of got to prep them for that and, you know, make sure that they understand, you know, that's where food comes from. So <laughs> that was just part of it for us. <laughs> uh, yeah. So super funny. I set her on the road for her career. <laughs> I, I could not believe it when I heard what she was going to do. It was too funny. Anyways, Thank you so much for joining me today. I love this chance to chat and hang out with everyone. It's super fun. Um, this week we will be visiting stencils, the fun of stencils. I have used a lot of stencils and I love to use stencils and I'll demo a couple of fun products. Let me show you two of them that I would like to do quick little demos with. Um, I have here from Vicki Bootin actually. It is a texture paste with iridescent glitter. <gasps> so fun. <laughs> and then I also have this stuff from Liquitex and it is the flexible modeling paste that I really love that I had to replace when I had dried out my giant jar of it. So, you know, time to use it, right? Get it used up before it w dries out. Uh, Sheila says, I didn't grow up on a farm like he did. I'm working on it though. Yeah, and it's it's tough. It's a different way of looking at it. Kathy says, yay, stencils. <laughs> I love stencils. I'll show you my organization system for stencils and I will we'll, we'll play with them and maybe look at different ways that we might want to play with some stencils and use our stencils. I think that they're such a versatile tool to have in your crafty toolbox and they're a lot of fun. So thanks for joining me. Thanks again. Thank you for being here. I really love it. And I will be back tomorrow with more crafty chat and <laughs> and it will be a good time. Dion says, yay, stencils and paste and glitter. <laughs> so lots of fun things ahead. I got a couple more ideas for this week and yeah, it's just going to be fun. We will play, but maybe not with bubbles. So it will be easier to listen to, Kat, or Sheila. <laughs> so, uh, easier to listen to. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day. Hopefully this makes your day a little bit happier at home. Awesome. Bye. And don't forget, those little thumbs up on your way out. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Life-changing blender brushes are truly life-changing. <laughs> <laughs> so many good things yes that we can do with stencils okay talk to y'all later bye